والهزالا والهزالا إنه نور تجلى ربنا الله تعالى زل القرآن حقا ويقينا لي وسحقا للأباطيل وفرقا ساقا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أما بعد فعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الإيمان يمان وفي رواية قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جاء أهل اليمن أرق أفئدة الإيمان يمان والفقه يمان والحكمة يمانية وفي رواية أخرى قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لما نزلت إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتاكم أهل اليمن هم أرق قلوبا والإيمان يمان والفقه يمان والحكمة يمانية وعن ثوبان رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إني لبعقر حوضي أذود الناس لأهل اليمن أضرب بعصايا حتى يرفض عليهم أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأزواجه وذرياته Respected brothers and sisters greet you with the Islamic greeting of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, the day of Friday, we are very fortunate to have seen this blessed day. And Alhamdulillah, we are here to, inshallah, listen to a few virtues related to the people of Yemen and listen to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to say about Yemen itself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand and comprehend and try to act upon what is going to be said and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to try and assist the Muslims in Yemen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to have this concern and yearning to try and assist the Muslims wherever they are throughout the whole world. Now the virtues of the people of Yemen and the virtues of Yemen itself is such a topic that the reality is we cannot do justice within 35 40 minutes but at the same time it is incumbent upon the muslims and the believers that they try and understand and learn what the virtues are related to what the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in regards to the people of yemen now before we talk about this i want to mention a interesting incident that took place during the life of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now the mission of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as everybody knows, was when he was sent to Makkah al-Mukarramah as a prophet of Allah, his mission was to bring the people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was such a difficult mission that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa went through times of prosperity, he went through times of happiness, he went through times of difficulties. And a time came in the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa where he was faced with many obstacles. But this did, not, this did not push him away from his mission and this did not stop the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from proclaiming the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now an interesting point that took place in the seerah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is one of the greatest qualities of those who saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba and which is related to the topic of today, the virtue of the people of Yemen is the fact that upon occasion Abbas radiallahu an he was approached by a group of companions who wanted to make the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa leave Makkah and arrive to Medina Munawwara. Now this was a delegation and Abbas radiallahu an with his nephew, the, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he approaches this group of people who have just left Medina to try and persuade the Messenger of Allah to leave Makkah and to take refuge in Medina Munawwara. Abbas radiallahu anhu narrating this incident himself, he says that when these group of people came, 
and they spoke. I said to them, listen very carefully, this is my nephew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is well respected, and he is loved by us, and he is protected by us. And you people want to take him from Mecca, and you want him to migrate and live amongst yourselves. What are the conditions of protection, and how are you going to safeguard my nephew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Now these group of people, and very shortly we will find out who these people truly were. They responded to Abbas radiallahu anhu's question and said, Oh Abbas, let us ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. So they asked, Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu an was there present in this gathering. And he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, what do you require from us? What do you want from us? So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, that if you want me to migrate to Medina Munawwara, then you protect me like you protect your wives and your children. You take care of me the way you take care of your family members. And if an enemy attacks from within, then you will support me and assist me against these enemies. And the Messenger of Allah enumerated a few other conditions. Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu an, he was sitting listening to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa had to say. And after finishing, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was asked by Ka'ab bin Malik. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, what do we get in return if we fulfill these conditions? What do we get in return if we fulfill these points which you just mentioned in front of us? And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, that if you fulfill this criteria and these conditions, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guarantee that you will be given Jannah. And upon this, Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu an said, Rabbi hal bay. He said, what a bargain then. What a bargain. If we do all these conditions and fulfill these conditions, then this is a bargain in our eyes we are ready to accept. Now what happens? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa migrates to Medina Munawwara. And as he lives in Medina Munawwara with these Ansar, and with these companions who loved him more than their own selves, and they sacrificed everything for the sake and pleasure of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa A time comes where the Messenger of Allah, he returns back to Makkah as the conqueror in the eighth year of the seed of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what happens in the Islamic Hijri in the, in the eighth year? He con- conquers Makkah tul Mukarramah and these same Ansar start talking amongst themselves. And they start saying to each other that, you know what, it feels like the Messenger of Allah is going to remain here. And he's not going to return back to us with Mad- uh, to Medina Munawwara, despite us sacrificing everything, despite us giving him our lives, and giving him our children, and protecting him, it feels as if the Messenger of Allah is going to remain in Makkah al-Mukarramah, his homeland, he's never going to return back. Subhanallah. Imagine the pain and the anguish that the companions were going through, especially the Ansar. Now this reached the ears of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu an. So the Messenger of Allah told Sa'ad bin Ubadah, gather all the Ansar in one tent and I will address them and speak to them. So all the Ansar, they arrive in this tent. And as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa enters, he speaks to this group of people. Who are these same people? These are those individuals who are not long ago requested the Messenger of Allah to leave Makkah and arrive in Medina. So you can understand the pain that they are feeling. So he says to these people that Alam Atikum Dullalan Fahadakum Allahubi. He says, Oh Ansar, tell me, didn't I come to you in the state that you people were misguided and Allah guided me through you? Didn't Allah guide you people via me? Then he said, Alam Atikum Fakiran, Fa'agnakum Allahubi, didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enrich you people through me? And the Messenger of Allah started enumerating all the blessings which Allah had given to the Ansar, to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And the narrations mentioned that the beards of the companions were drenched in tears because of the fact that they understood what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was saying. And they felt bad inside. Now the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa a very long narration, just cutting it short, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said to these same Ansar, he said, listen, by that being who controls the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if the whole of mankind were to travel and go on one path, and the Ansar were to go another direction, or travel and walk into another valley, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa would leave the entirety of mankind and walk upon the valley of the Ansar. And he would say to the Ansar, he said, that you people are like the inner cloth, or the inner part of the clothing and rest of mankind is like the outer part. Meaning, you are very close to my heart. You are very close to me. 
Now the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned all this about the Ansar. Who are these Ansar? These are the progeny. And these are the offspring of the people of Yemen. Subhanallah. These are those same children who migrated from Yemen. Their forefathers migrated from Yemen. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose them to travel to Medina Munawwara, reside and camp in Medina Munawwara to be a means of assistance to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal Rahimahullah, he mentions in his Musnad, a narration where upon occasion a man from the Ansar, he asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, you know the Surah, Surah, Surah to Saba, a chapter known as Saba, who is this person? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a piece of land? What is this? I do not know, Messenger of Allah, please inform me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Saba, Saba was a man, and he had ten children. And from those ten children, six of those children resided in Yemen, and four from those ten resided in Sham, in Great Assyria. From those six children, you have the tribes of Himyar, you have the tribes of Anmar, you have the tribe of Azd, which was... You could say the grandfather, great grandfather of the Aus and Khazraj. And these were the tribes which were assisting the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina Munawwara. So when you say the Ansar, then you will not be wrong to say that the Ansar, many of them were the people of Yemen or those who had connections with Yemen itself. And that is why in a narration mentioned in Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira radiallahu anh says, and it has been reported in many, many books of a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala inna al-imana, uh, Ala inna al-imana yaman, listen very carefully, true iman, true, the essence of true iman is with the people of Yemen. Iman is found inside Yemen, iman is found inside Yemen. Abu, Mu- Abu Mas'ud radiallahu an, upon occasion he says, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up, and as he stood up, he gave a khutbah and he said, Ala inna al-imana ha huna, Ala inna al-imana ha huna, Ala inna al-imana ha huna. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up and in the khutbah, he said, listen very carefully, O my companions, true Iman is over here, true Iman is over here, true Iman is over here. Abu Mas'ud radiallahu an says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed towards the direction of Yemen. In the direction of Yemen, Allahu Akbar. So when you look at Islam and the foundation of Islam, it was built upon the assistance of the people of Yemen. You have a very famous tribe amongst from the progeny of that man named by the Messenger of Allah as Saba, who resided in Yemen. From amongst his progeny and from that from that generation, one after another, there was a tribe known as the Ash'ari Yun. And from amongst that tribe, you have a great companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Musa al-Ashari radiallahu an, whose actual real name was Abdullah bin Qais radiallahu an. He was very, very young, and he went to go to Makkah al-Mukarramah to accept Iman at the hands of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After accepting Iman, he, he said to the Messenger of Allah, or through the instructions of the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, go back to Yemen and give da'wah and invite the people towards Islam. Abu Musa al-Ashari radiallahu an, listen to the advice of the Messenger of Allah, he leaves Makkah to Mukarma. Can you imagine this? Imagine this. You have the opportunity of being with the greatest man who ever stepped foot on the face of this earth, but despite this, you give preference to his words over the desires of yourself. You know, if there was anybody in today's day and age, they would have said, Yes, I want to stay with you, forget everybody else. The Messenger of Allah said, Go back to the people of Yemen and invite them towards Islam. Abu Musa al Ashi radiallahu an, the narrations mention, Ibn, uh, Ibn Abd al Bar rahimahullah mentions this, and in Al Isti'ab, he says, that when Abu Musa al-Ashi radiallahu anhu arrived back in Yemen, he kept on giving da'wah to the people, to such an extent that when Khaybar, the battle of Khaybar took place, Abu Musa al-Ashi radiallahu an, he went on a ship, boarded a ship, and he ended up back in Medina Munawwara. And when he arrived at Medina Munawwara, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was delighted with two things. One was the victory of Khaybar. Three things. One was the victory of the Khay- of, against the, the Jews of Khaybar. And the second was Ja'far. And those who migrated to Abyssinia, they arrived at the same time when the Messenger of Allah just conquered uh, the, the Khaybar, the, the forts of Khaybar. And the third happiness was Abu Musa al-Ashi radiallahu an, who remained in Yemen giving da'wah. He arrived with how many people? He brought with him 50 men from the people of Yemen. 
And when he came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Imran bin Hussein radiallahu anhu, he mentions, this is mentioned in Bukhari as well, that when he came, Imran bin Hussein radiallahu anhu says, I was sitting in the masjid, I had arrived in the masjid, I tied my camel just outside the, the masjid, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was uh, sitting with the Banu Tamim, and uh, a group of people from Yemen, who he later on recognized as Abu Musa al-Ashri radiallahu anhu. He says, I met Abu Musa al-Ashri sitting in this gathering. And as he entered, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa saw the Banu Tamim. And he said to the Banu Tamim, that, O oh Banu Tamim, accept Bushra, glad tidings from me. Accept these glad tidings from me. And the Banu Tamim, you know, they turned around and they said, Oh, mas- oh Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa these people didn't value the Messenger of Allah. You know, these people, they didn't truly understand the mizaj and the temperament of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, accept glad tidings from me. Accept these glad tidings. And Banu Tamim said, Oh Messenger of Allah, you know, you keep on giving us glad tidings, but give us something. Fa'atina. Bashartana fa'atina. In Bukhari it is mentioned, they said, you've given us numerous glad tidings, give us something. We hear with our ears, but we want something in our hands. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa blessed face changed color. And then he turned to Abu Musa al-Ashir radiallahu anhu, who not long ago had just arrived, and who had lived in Yemen for so many years, preaching the message of Islam. The Messenger of Allah turned to Abu Musa al-Ashir radiallahu anhu, and said, Oh Abu Musa, you accept the glad tidings from me, when the Banu Tamim rejected it from me. And the, uh, the tribe of Ash'ar, this tribe the, from Yemen, Abu Musa al-Ashri, along with these 50 men, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa we accept this glad tidings from you wholeheartedly. Upon occasion, the same Abu Musa al-Ashri radiallahu an, you know, if it wasn't for Abu Musa al-Ashri radiallahu an, his sacrifice, his efforts, then we would be deprived from many, many statements of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Musa al-Ashri upon occasion says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was on a road between Makkah and Medina, and a Arabi, a Bedouin arrived to speak to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And he said to the Messenger of Allah very harshly, he said, Allah tunjizli ma wa'atani, O Messenger of Allah, won't you fulfill your promise which you gave to me? And the Messenger of Allah said, accept glad tidings from me. And he said, I'm fed up of these glad tidings, give me something. And the Messenger of Allah's face changed color. And the Prophet ﷺ turned to Abu Musa al-Ashri. He narrates, he says, that I was present and Bilal radiallahu an was also present. And the Messenger of Allah said, both of you accept this as due to the fact that this person did not accept it from me. And thereafter, Abu Musa al-Ashri radiallahu an was blessed by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, these people, because of their iman, because of their, the sacrifices that they gave, they were beloved to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And today, when we look in the world today, as Brother Shazad was mentioning, that the situation in Yemen is like, this is such a country that is disowned by many Muslim communities. They don't want to even bother looking towards this situation. You know, we've disowned them totally. And when we look at the narrations, we find glad tidings after glad tidings after glad tidings after glad tidings about the people of Yemen. You know, the very first people who accepted the da'wah and the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When he stood, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Qur'an, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضامر. That, O oh Ibrahim, make the a'lan, make the proclamation of hajj. Every, from every valley and from every mountain pass, men will come to you upon camels walking on their feet. And Ibrahim alayhi salam said, O oh Allah, I, how will I make the, the announcement? How will everybody hear me? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Ibrahim alayhi salam, He said, O oh Ibrahim, it is upon you to make the announcement and it is up to us that we make this announcement reach the ears of every single believer. And that is why Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu an used to say that the amount of times a person says, Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. When he answered the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that is the same amount of times he will go to perform the hajj. If he said it once, he will only go once. If he said it twice, he will go twice. If he said it 50 times, then he will go and perform Hajj 50 times. Now, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu says, the very first people, awwalu man ajaba Ibrahim alayhi salam ahlul Yemen. Allahu Akbar. The very first people to answer the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam to perform Hajj was none other than the people of Yemen. You know, upon occasion, a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to go and perform Umrah. And I remember... 
I mentioned this couple of years ago when we spoke about the virtues of Yemen, subhanAllah, and I remember the statement of Abdullah bin Abbas, radiallahu an. I was on the second floor in the haram, in Makkah al-Mukarramah, and a man came, and this has happened to many, many people, they will know about this, that people come up to you strangers and they ask you, brother, where do you go to start tawaf? Where do you do this? Where do you do that? So I was standing there, and I just finished performing my tawaf, and this brother came up to me, and I looked at him and he spoke to me, and he said to me, Sheikh, you know, where is the Kaaba? Where is the Kaaba? And I was surprised at the same time, you know, you feel happy and sad, the fact that people do not know the location and they do not do their research before going to perform a sacred pilgrimage or a sacred action of going to perform Umrah. So I said to him, brother, it's just right in front of you, keep on walking. And before he left, he said, Jazakumullah khaira, before he left, he was speaking to me in Arabic, he said, before he left, I said, where are you from, brother? And subhanAllah, he said, I am from Yemen. He said, I am from Yemen. And it struck me in my heart, how many of our people in our communities, they delay the Umrah, they delay the Hajj, not because they don't have the ability, they have the full abilities, they have the money, they have the wealth. And on the other side, you have the people of Yemen who are starving, who are dying, who barely have a minimum wage. You know, 1.3 million are on the brink of starvation. More than that now, it's been over a decade going through these difficulties. And here you have this guy who has been pulled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and perform Umrah and he doesn't even know where the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This is what you call tawfiq and this is what you call where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses a group of people and he deprives other people like me and you. This is why we have to give attention and we have to concentrate upon these group of people, especially the people of Yemen. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, it is mentioned in Bukhari again, that Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with the companions and all of a sudden he said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina. O oh Allah, bless us in our sham. You know the nisbah, very rarely do you find in the narrations where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attaches himself to something or to someone. And if he does this, then there is great importance to that object or to that human being who he has attached himself to. Here he says, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina. O oh Allah, bless us in our sham. My sham, our sham. You know, including by you being a follower of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa indirectly, you have to have a link, an attachment to greater Syria like Iraq, like Syria, like Yemen and all these places. You claim to be a Muslim but you can't have the same mentality what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa had in regards to Sham and Yemen then that means you're not a true lover of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina. O oh Allah, bless us in our sham. Companion said, wa fi najdina. O oh Messenger of Allah, and our najd. And the Messenger of Allah said, fi shamina wa fi yamanina. O oh Allah, bless us in our sham and in our Yemen. They asked again and he said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa fi yamanina. O oh Allah, bless us in our sham. Bless us in our Yemen. And he left najd. He left Najd and he said, Huna, Huna zalazil. Over there is many earthquakes and from there the, the horns of shaitan will appear. But the focus of the narration is fi Yemenina, in our Yemen. In our Yemen. You know, nowadays you find Muslims who will actually start saying it's all their fault that they're going through these difficulties. You know, upon occasion, Mufti Taqi Usmani, he has mentioned this, uh, one of his students mentioned this in his commentary on Sahih Bukhari. He says that upon occasion when Bosnia was being attacked, by the Zalim Russians, and they were going through a lot of difficulties, some Muslim brother came to Mufti Taqi Uthmani Sahib, Hafidahullah, and said, Shaykh, you talk about Bosnia, you talk about the Muslims, half of these guys, they don't even have beards. They don't even have beards, what's the point supporting these people? And Mufti Taqi Uthmani, he was really upset, really down, and he said that if they don't have facial hair, they don't have Iman and Islam like you do, because you live in the West, don't they have the kalima inside their heart? Isn't that sufficient for you as a proof that you should help and support them? Isn't the kalima enough that they believe that La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and Muhammad is our messenger? Isn't that sufficient for you that you should help them? And you have this, this, this ajeeb mentality where we say it's their fault. It's not their fault, it's our fault. It's our problem. If they're going through difficulties, it is our situation and our problem. So this is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Wa fi Yemenina. Let me give you another narration, an example. In the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa let me give you a brief background. During the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa 
Yemen was the centralized focus, focal point in the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He had a lot of love. He had a lot of love and attachment to Yemen to such an extent that when Kisra was in charge and when he had taken over Yemen, the entirety of Yemen from the Habashis, the Abyssinians who were ruling Yemen for over seventy years. The Messenger of Allah, after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, he sent letters to all the leaders of the world. And he sent a letter to Kisra, who had control over Yemen as well, as well as Persia. And he ripped up this letter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So the Messenger of Allah, he cursed him and he said, May Allah tear his kingdom up as well. And, you know, within a few months, his whole kingdom was broken and torn apart and he was killed eventually. Now in Yemen, Kisra had given authority to a man by the name of Badan, and he had governor leadership of the whole of Yemen. This man was sent by Kisra to go and find out about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Is he truly a Nabi, as he is claiming? So Badan, with two of his officers, they go to meet the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And when he arrives to meet the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we have heard in the narrations as well where these people they had very long uh, mustache and they had no beard and the messenger of allah turned his face away from these people and after speaking to them and having a dialogue these people realized that this man is indeed blessed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of allah said before you return let me tell you something that your king and leader has been killed and allah has replaced him by some with somebody else and these people when they were returning back to Yemen they said that if this is true what he is saying that this man can only be a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they did their research they found out that the messenger of Allah had spoken the truth and what happened through this the entirety of Yemen including these two soldiers and Badan they all accepted Islam now the son of Badan after he died the son of Badan when he was ruling during his rule there was a man by the name of Aswad al-Anasi and this is very very important for us to understand you know as i mentioned before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ala inna al-iman yaman that the iman true iman is the iman of yemen imam nawawi rahmatullah alayhi mentions he says that it is as if when the messenger of allah emphasized the iman of the people of yemen it was as if he sensed this iman that was emitting all the way being emitted like light all the way from yemen subhanallah now there was a man by the name of aswad al-anasi who with 700 men took over Sana'a, over Yemen and certain areas. And he defeated and killed the son of Badan, whose name was Shar. And after killing him, he claimed to be a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just before, a few days before the demise of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this man, what did he do? This man, he claimed to be a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to such an extent that he started having a large following. And as this following grew, and he became more popular, his cronies said to him that there's only one man who can defeat you in regards to your objectives. And who is that? Subhanallah. Remember this name, my brothers. Abu Muslim al-Khawlani rahimahullah. Abu Muslim al-Khawlani rahimahullah is not a companion. He is a tabi'i. He has seen the likes of Abu Bakr Siddiq. He has seen the likes of Umar radiallahu an. He was a great companion. Imam Zahabi Rahmatullahi mentions about Abu Muslim al khawlani Before I explain this incident, amazing incident, to give you value of, for the people of Yemen and how these people were blessed in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They mention Abu Muslim al khawlani Rahimahullah. He was so great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whenever he would raise his hands in the court of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not let him put his hands down without answering and accepting his dua. You know, they say that whenever they wanted it to rain, then they would say to Abu Muslim al khawlani make dua to Allah. And before putting his hand down, Allah would answer his dua straight away. He would travel, he fought against the Romans. And they mention upon occasion, he came across a river, and they had to cross this river. And he read some duas, and he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say upon his horse, with many other mujahideen, he covered and cross this ocean and this river without anything happening to his horse or to himself or to the army. And they mentioned one of the soldiers who were with him, they dropped their beaker, their cup inside the ocean and they returned back into the middle of the ocean. He extracted the cup and gave it back to the individual. Subhanallah. Imagine what kind of man this person was. He would say about himself, Subhanallah. Abu Muslim al khawlani rahimahullah used to say about himself, and this man was from Yemen. He used to say that if I was to see Jannah with my own eyes, if I was to see Jannah with my own very eyes, then this would not increase me in ibadah 
much more than what I'm doing now. Allahu Akbar. You know, this is a very dangerous statement. Dangerous in the sense that for people like me and you, if we were told that tomorrow, or not tomorrow, in the next 10 minutes, your soul will be extracted. How will we change our lives, subhanallah? And Abu Muslim al khawlani says, if I saw Jannah with my own eyes, it will not change my lifestyle because I'm doing everything as much as possible. So Abu Muslim al khawlani rahimahullah, who was living in Yemen at the time, and this is why Imam Nawi rahmatullahi says, the Messenger of Allah could sense this Iman. He was a Tabi'i. Aswad al Anasi heard about Abu Muslim al Khawlani and they told him that the only man who could defeat you is Aswad al uh, Abu Muslim al Khawlani. So Abu Muslim al Khawlani, rahimullah, he is called in the courtroom of Aswad al Anasi and Aswad al Anasi says, Do you bear witness that I am the Messenger of Allah? And he said, I'm deaf, I can't hear what you are saying. He said, Do you bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah? He said, Yes. I bear witness. He said, what about me? Do you bear witness that I am the Messenger of Allah? Subhanallah. You know, the COVID-19 struck us and many people sold their Iman. You know, many people threw their Iman out the window. And here you have the people of Yemen and the likes of Abu Muslim al Khawlani rahimahullah who were so staunch and firm in his Iman that the likes of Aswad al Anasi could not deter him from his belief in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And where was he from? He was from Yemen. He was from Yemen. Abu Muslim al Khawlani rahimullah narrates, he says that after this incident, Aswad al Anasi told his people that let's build a great fire and we will throw this man and burn him to dust. So they built a great fire like Nimrud did to Ibrahim alayhi salam and they tied him up and they flung him through a catapult into this fire and nothing happened to the body of Abu Muslim al Khawlani rahimullah. He came back as normal. And the people who were there, who were the followers of Aswad al-Anisi, they said, if you don't kick him out of the country, this man will cause problems for you. So he expelled him from Yemen. So what does Abu Muslim al-Khawlani rahimullah do? He travels all the way to Medina to Munawwara. He travels all the way to Medina. And by this time, the Messenger of Allah has passed away. Abu Bakr's Khilafah is taking place. And Umar radiallahu sees this man enter the masjid. He's never seen this man before in his life. He prays two rakat here to masjid. After giving salam, Umar approaches and says, Where is the man from? And he says, From Yemen. So Umar radiallahu, because this news spread like fire throughout the whole Muslim world, Umar radiallahu said, oh, oh man, can you tell me, what did the enemy of Allah do to the one who was thrown into the fire? Into the fire? And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. And then Umar radiallahu said, Tell me by Allah, is that pers- who is that person? And he gave his kunia, he said, Abu Muslim. His name is Abu Muslim. He never even said, it is me. It is me. He said, his name is Abu Muslim. And thereafter, Umar radiallahu anhu said, tell me in the name of Allah, is that person you? And he said, because you've taken the name of Allah, yes, that person is me. Umar took hold of his hand and he made him sit between Umar and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And Umar radiallahu anhu said his famous statement about Abu Muslim al-Khawlani al-Yamani. He said, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah who has made me live to see that which happened to Ibrahim alayhi salam to one of the followers of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa You know, this is the people of Yemen. Their Iman was so great that not even a fire could burn them in this dunya. Their Iman was so strong that nothing of the fire of this dunya could do anything to them. Imagine, they, they, the fire of the hereafter will not touch these people. And that is why there's many, many narrations upon occasion. Imam, you have the great scholar of Islam, Imam Shawkani rahimahullah, who was also from Yemen who has written many books, one of his famous books that he has written, Tafsir of the Qur'an, Fatul Qadir. He mentions under a verse of the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, man yartadda minkum an deenihi, fa sawfa ya'ti allahu biqawm, yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna, adillatina ala al-mu'mineen, a'izzatina ala al-kafirin, yujahiduna fi sabilillah, wa la yakhafuna fi allahi lawmata la'im. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, if you turn away from your religion, then Allah will bring about a group of people who Allah loves and those people love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in turn as well. Umar radiallahu an, he says that when this verse was revealed, I said to the Messenger of Allah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Ana wa qawmi, is this verse referring to me and my people, the Quraysh? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said no. He said, Oh Umar, no. Who is it referring to? The Messenger of Allah was, next to him was Abu Musa al-Ashri radiallahu an. And the Messenger of Allah pointed to Abu Musa al-Ashri and said, it is this verse is referring to the people of Yemen and the likes of Abu Musa al-Ashri radiallahu an. 
Allah says, if you leave the religion, no problem. We will bring a nation and a qawm which is beloved to Allah and they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equally. Who are these people? It is the people of Yemen. Abu Huraira radiallahu an further says that when the surah Iza Jaa Nasrullahi wal Fat was revealed, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ataakum Ahlul Yemen. That Allah says in the Quran, when the victory of Allah and His Nusra, His help arrives, what is Allah talking about? The Messenger of Allah explained this verse by saying, Ataakum Ahlul Yemen. That when the people of Yemen arrive, then this is the Nusra and assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the help and assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hum araqu af'ida. They are the most soft-hearted of people. You know, they have the very soft hearts. They are not arrogant. They are not like ordinary people. They have very soft hearts. And then he said, Al-Imanu Yaman. True Iman is the Iman of the people of Yemen. And then he said, Al-Fiqhu Yamaniya. He said, True understanding of the Deen of Allah. It is the understanding of the people of Yemen. And then he said, Wal Hikmatu Yamaniya. And true wisdom is the wisdom of the people of Yemen. You know, the same Abu Musa al Ashir radiallahu an. He was in the company of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa When he accepted the glad tidings from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa the Messenger of Allah said, Why have you come? And the, messenger, the Abu Musa al Ashri with the people of Yemen, the very first thing they said, they said, Jitna lina tafakkaha fi deen. O Messenger of Allah, we have only come to you so that we may have deeper understanding of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there's so many narrations, Allahu Akbar. Let me give you another narration. Imam Suyuti mentioned this. Mu'az bin Jabal radiallahu an says, Inna Allah istaqbala bi sham The Messenger of Allah said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put sham in front of me and behind me. Wa khalfa dhahri. Yemen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed Yemen behind me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed me and said, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inni ja'altu laka. مَا تُجَاهَكَ غَنِيمَةً وَرِزْقَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam What is in front of you? Sham. We have made Sham. And you know Sham is not only including Syria. It includes parts of Palestine. It includes parts of Iraq. It includes Leb- uh, Lebanon. It includes uh, the whole of Syria. It includes many, many areas. The Messenger of Allah said, All this we have made غَنِيمَةً War, booty. We have given you this as war booty. And he said, وَخَلْفَ ظَهْرِكَ madada." And what is behind you? And what was behind the Messenger of Allah? The Messenger of Allah says, Behind me was directly Yemen. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to me, that I have used Yemen as a madada, as a support, and as a means of assistance when you are in difficulty. When you are going through problems, then the people of Yemen will support you. That is why, even after the demise of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa when he left this dunya, and the flames of apostasy, were, were covering and surrounding Medina Manawara, many of those individuals who supported Abu Bakr Siddiq and who supported the armies against the Romans and the Persians were from none other than the people of Yemen. None other than the people of Yemen. And this is why it is very, very important for us, brothers and sisters, that we understand that the virtues of the people of Yemen are so great that we can talk about these. We can talk about them until we do not realize and understand these people were blessed and chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we will have deficiency in our Islam and in our Iman. You know, we're not asking you to donate. We're not asking you to, you know, give your hundreds and thousands. What we are asking you is to develop this concern for the people of Yemen, just as you have concern for your own family members, just as you would have concern for your own children, have much more concern for the people of Yemen. You know why? You know why you should have concern for these people? Let me give you one beautiful narration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Shuraih bin Ubaid radiyallahu an. He mentions Thoban radiyallahu an mentions. He says, now listen to this narration very carefully. When people on the day of judgment will be so desperate for drinking a glass of water on the day of judgment because of the severe heat and because of the difficulties on the day of judgment. So radiallahu an says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Inni labi uqri hawdi, I will be standing by the bankment or the edges of my hold, my the pond of Kothar. And how great is the pond of Kothar? It is from Medina Munawwara all the way to Sana'a, according to the narrations. One narration from Medina all the way to Sana'a, which is the capital of Yemen. Why did the Messenger of Allah choose Yemen out of all other places? Because he has an attachment to the people of Yemen. He has an attachment to this land. He says it is from Medina all the way to Sana'a. Thawban says, the Messenger of Allah says that, 
إِنِّي لَبِعُقْرِ حَوْضِ أَذُودُ النَّاسَ لِأَهْلِ الْيَمَنِ I will be by my pond of Kothar and I will be pushing people away. I will be pushing people away for who? Not for people like me and you, only for the people of Yemen. I will push everybody away so that the very first people who can drink from the pond of Kothar will be none other than the people of Yemen. That is why Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, he called a companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa He made him sit on a ride and come to the courtroom of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. And this companion said to Umar bin Abdul Aziz, You've called me from a very long distance. Why did you call me? And he said, I've heard that you have one hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And I wish to hear this directly with my own ears. Please narrate to me what did the Messenger of Allah say about the pond of Kothar. And the companion, he went forward and he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that the pond of Kothar, it is such that only those individuals will drink from this pond of Kothar who have certain qualities. And from amongst those qualities is that they are from the Muhajireen. And their condition is such that they have disheveled hair. They are in a bad state. And they will be brought forward and they will be the first people to drink from the pond of Gauthar. Because of this narration, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, he would try his best to live a life of poverty and a life of difficulty just so that he could join the people of Yemen and those who will be the first to drink from the pond of Gauthar. You know, these are great people. Today, they can barely drink a glass of water because of the fact that it is contaminated with dirt and mud from the dunya. But on the Day of Judgment, the drink that they will have on the, in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that water according to the narrations will be more whiter than milk and it will be more sweeter than honey itself. So if these people are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shouldn't we have an attachment for these people? And this is why I want to finish with two things, two points. Number one, there's many other points, things that could be mentioned, but let me just give you an example. You have a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muadh bin Jabal radhiyallahu an. Muadh bin Jabal radhiyallahu an, at the age of 25 years old. You know, you look at our youngsters today, 25 years old. Brother gets reaches the age of 45 and he still says, "Brother, I'm still, I'm not ready to get married." And you find Muadh bin Jabal radiallahu an who hits the age of 25 and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends him to Yemen to teach them about their deen. Subhanallah. And in the narration, if I can remember correctly, in the Musnad of Ahmad, the Messenger of Allah, in the uh, in, uh, Tabaqat ibn Sa'd, rahimahullah, it is mentioned in the narration that Ya'ti Muadh ibn Jabal in Yawm al-Qiyamati Imam al-Ulama. That on the day of judgment, Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu an will arrive on the day of judgment in a state that he will be the leader of all the ulama, of all the scholars. Allahu Akbar. The Messenger of Allah is sending him to teach the people of Yemen. And the narrations mention, and wallahi, you know, there is very rarely in history have you ever seen a dialogue or conversation take place between a ustad, a teacher and a student, between a father and his son, uh, between a friend with another friend, like that of a conversation that took place between Mu'ad bin Jabal and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Mu'ad bin Jabal is on his camel, facing towards Yemen, being sent off by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And the Messenger of Allah cannot tolerate this. Why? Because this man was beloved to the Messenger of Allah. He is facing towards Medina. Mu'adh is facing towards Yemen. And the Messenger of Allah says to Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anhu, O Mu'adh, inni uhibbuka fillah. O kama qal. O Mu'adh, learn and remember this very carefully. I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, the Messenger of Allah is saying this to somebody who he loves. There cannot be a iota of doubt in the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tears are flowing through his eyes, and Muaz is also crying and upset, and Muaz bin Jabal is given some advice of what to do when he arrives in Yemen, and then the Messenger of Allah at the end he says to Muaz, he said, "O Muaz, inna ka la alla ka talqani, Allah talqani baadi baada ami hada." O oh, Mu'az, it is very likely that after this year finishes, you will not find me again in Medina Munawwara. You're not going to find me again in Medina Munawwara. And then he said, Wala allaka an tamurra bi masjidi wa qabri. And it is very likely that you, when you will return next year, you will not find me here. You will pass by my masjid and you will pass by my grave. Subhanallah. The sacrifice that the Messenger of Allah is giving. That that person who is the most beloved, he's sending him to Yemen. He's sending him to Yemen. 
You know why? Because with that sacrifice, you cannot have change in the community. With that giving, contributing to the community, you can never ever bring change into your life. And this is a reality which many of us do not understand. I want to quote a statement of Sheikh Abul Hassan Ali and Nadwi Rahimahullah, one of the great scholars of Islam, who was respected by both Arabs and non-Arabs. You know, he mentioned something very beautiful. He was talking to those individuals in the, the Ummah who have, uh, who have a position of authority, who have uh, substance, and they can get their voices to reach the communities. He spoke to them and he said to these people, he said, oh people, listen very carefully. He said, if you are in a position of authority and you have the ability to bring change, then you should sacrifice that which is the most beloved to you. And he gave an example, three examples from the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, one example I give of Muaz sending him to Yemen, to that land, knowing that he's not going to see him again despite this, the Messenger of Allah sends Muaz bin Jabal to Yemen. Why? Because those people need Muaz. Those people are beloved to the Messenger of Allah. He preferred the people of Yemen over himself. Allahu Akbar. This is one example. Shaykh Abdul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah says, in the life of the Messenger of Allah, we find this quality, that because he was in a position of authority, never ever did he sit down and relax. Rather, he sacrificed those people who were close and dear to him, and he gave them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of choosing foreigners and strangers in the community. Nowadays, what do you find? People who are in positions of authority, they will never ever move from their chairs. From, from the kursi. They, and if they do, then they will always utilize those people in the communities who have no connection with them whatsoever. Let them go. Who cares? But in the life of the Messenger of Allah, he chose his own family. Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah subhanallah. And this talk he gave in India uh, amongst the, the, the khawas, those people who had a position of authority in the community. And he said, if you don't believe me, he said, take the example of the Battle of Badr. In the Battle of Badr, what happened? The Messenger of Allah is questioned by the Quraysh, Utba, Shayba and Rabia. They come out and they, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is requested by these people that send out Akifa un kiram, send us our equals, send us our own people so we can have a duel. If there was anybody else out there, they would send any Zaid Bakr Amr, let him go and die, who cares? What does the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He chooses three people from his own family. Allahu Akbar. He chooses Ali radiallahu an. He's soon to be son-in-law to go into the battlefield to die for the sake of Allah. He chooses his own uncle Hamza radiallahu an. And he chooses his relative Ubaidah bin Harith radiallahu an. To do what? To go and fight in the battlefield and give their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu, Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah says, the Messenger of Allah could have chose anybody, but he chose three people from his own family. And he wanted to teach us that when it comes to sacrificing and giving something, then giving that which is beloved to you is part of the sunnah and the lifestyle of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you cannot do this, then you have no relationship with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can claim with your mouth, like a poet says, Ya Muslim, Tadda'il Islam majana, Halla aqamta ala da'waka burhana, O Muslim, very openly you claim very freely you claim that you are a Muslim. Why haven't you bring established a proof that you are a believer in Allah and His Messenger? Why didn't you give something as sacrifice that you are truly giving something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And it's not lip service. A second example, Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah gives. He says that when it came to the impermissibility of riba, interest, when it came to depriving Hundreds and thousands of dirhams and dinars being accumulated due to riba interest taking place. In Hajjatul Wada, the Messenger of Allah made an announcement and he said, From today, riba has been made haram. Nobody is allowed to deal in interest whatsoever. And who does the Messenger of Allah use as an example to show the people that this is the first example I am presenting to the people so that they realize that this law has been implemented? If it was anybody else, they would have chosen some stranger outside. The Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who does he choose as an example? He says, "I have made riba interest haram. After today, nobody is allowed to deal in interest. And the first example of this is the dealings of my uncle Abbas radiallahu anhu. 
He is not allowed to take the money that is owed to him. It has been made haram. Sheikh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah says, look at this example. The Messenger of Allah chose, he could have chosen anybody from the community and none of them would have had a problem with this because they were ready to sacrifice their life. But despite this, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he do? He chose a man from his own family, his own uncle Abbas radiallahu an. And I want to give you another third example, and then we'll finish on this inshallah. The third example, Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah gives, he says that during the days of Jahiliyyah, many of the Arabs knew that obviously there was tribes that were on the verge of killing other tribes because of the blood feuds that were going on for many years, 200, 300 years. Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah says that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa stood up in Hajjatul Wada and he gave a khutbah and said that after today the blood feuds that you have and the blood money that is owned owed to different tribes it has been abolished and we are not going to take any sort of money all has been forgiven forgotten who did he choose from the crowd and the community to implement this rule, if it was anybody else, it would have been some stranger outside. And this is what we see in the dunya today. When it comes to sacrificing, choose everybody else. And when it comes to earning and getting points and getting plus points for yourself, then everybody wants that for themselves. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, after today, blood money and taking revenge in regards to this has been made haram and it has been abolished. And the very first example of this is from my own family, SubhanAllah. And he dropped the blood money which was owed to Rabia bin Harith, who was killed due to by the tri- tribe of Hudayl. Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah says that these are examples that we should learn from the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa that when it comes to sacrificing, when it comes to giving something up, then we should be the first people to give from our own family, from our own money, from our own wealth, from those things which are attached to us, to live like the lifestyle of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why, that is why, it is very very important that we understand this point. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to bring sacrifice into our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and ability to help and understand the virtues of the people of Yemen. May Allah make this uh, talk today uh, a means of alleviating the suffering of the Muslim Ummah throughout the whole world. Uh, I want to say Jazakumullah khaira to all the brothers who uh, organize this, uh, especially Brother Shazad and all those uh, behind the scenes who, who uh, organize and made the posters and try to make sure that this goes as well as possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for their intentions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the brothers and sisters for listening. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability and tawfiq that we sacrifice that which is most beloved to, to us for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I want, want, to mention, want to mention one last point which uh, just cropped up with Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahimahullah mentioned very beautifully he says when he gave these three examples and I'll finish on this when he gave these three examples he says these were examples of sacrifice giving that which is most beloved to you and then he says that in the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa when it came to taking from the community the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa deprived himself Allahu Akbar and subhanallah the example that Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi gives is amazing and it just shows the foresightedness of these people and how these people were truly attached to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says when the commandment of zakat came what does zakat mean that you take from the rich and you give to the poor and in this country that we live in what do we find that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer we find in many places around the world where and to some some certain extent people have hundreds of bank accounts in different places to avoid tax and here you have the message of Allah. When the commandment of zakat came, what does that mean? Take from the rich and give to the poor. It could have been possible that the message of Allah, and this was a sign of him being a true prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of taking that money and utilizing it himself, he made it haram upon not only himself, but upon the family of the prophet, the Banu Hashim, till Qiyamah that it is not permissible to give zakat money to the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Where there was benefit, he should have said, yes, I am mustahik, I deserve the money from the community. He deprived his family and for the community, he said, you can give zakat to such, to such, to such a person and such a group of people. This goes to show the love and affection the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had for the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept what we have mentioned and may Allah give us a tawfiq and ability to uh, practice upon what has been said. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah. الله رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى على خير هلك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيم جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته